Good morning. My name is Corinne and I am a registered nurse at St. Mary's Medical Center. Today, I join my fellow nurses in the Twin Ports, Two Harbors, and the Twin Cities to express how saddened we are to be here once again. We have been bargaining in good faith with the hospitals for seven months now. We never thought that we would be here again, having another press conference, announcing the results of yet another vote to authorize a strike. And yet we are here. As we stand here today, our Essentia bargaining team is back at the negotiating table, hoping for movement toward a contract that addresses the staffing and retention crisis and acknowledges nurses' sacrifices over the last two plus years. The current staffing levels at Essentia are unacceptable and unsafe. Let me share with you an example. This weekend on the cardiac unit at St. Mary's, there were 39 patients and five nurses. Now the cardiac care unit cares for patients who have recently undergone stenting, pacemaker implanting, bypass surgery, heart valve replacement, or are experiencing heart arrhythmia. One of those five nurses was the charge nurse, meaning their job is supposed to be coordinating care and not taking on a full patient assignment. The most senior nurse on that unit had only three years of nursing experience. These five nurses each had seven or eight patients and there were no CNAs who are an essential part of providing quality care. Patients on the cardiac care unit often require frequent specialized monitoring, including checking vital signs and adjusting powerful cardiac medications, monitoring heart rhythms for emergent changes and ensuring fragile surgical sites are not bleeding. The family of a patient on this unit earlier this year reported the unit was so short-staffed they had to assist their own family member to the bathroom. They also reported that during their three-day stay they, that they were in the hospital, they were taken on a walk by staff only one time because there was no staff available. Ambulating this patient population is critical to prevent secondary problems such as pneumonia or blood clots as well as ensuring patients are strong enough to care for themselves once they're back home. When nurses say that staffing levels are unsafe, this is what we mean. We mean that our patients are not receiving the quality of care that our communities and our families deserve. They are not receiving the quality of care that you deserve. I am a float nurse at Essentia and I can tell you that this is not some anecdote that fits conveniently into MA's message. This isn't some outlier event or isolated incident. This unsafe, unacceptable staffing happens daily across the entire hospital. And the ramifications are wide, most notably causing hospital acquired complications leading to longer stays. Additionally, when units across the hospital are short-staffed, emergency room wait times go through the roof. Patients may have to wait hours, if not days, for a bed and a nurse on a general floor. This domino effect is that staffing crisis, the, the staffing crisis extends into the emergency room, a department that can literally turn no one away. It is past time for Essentia to do the right thing by bringing proposals to the table that address the staffing and retention crisis, recognizes nurses' sacrifices, and puts patients before profits. Because of this, Essentia nurses have voted to authorize an unfair labor practice strike. And today, we announce our 10-day notice to strike starting on December 11th. I'll now turn it over to my colleague from St. Luke's.
good day. My name is Lisa and I'm a nurse. I'd like to start by thanking you for the opportunity to speak here today. My name is Lisa Holstrom. I've been a registered nurse practicing in Duluth since 2005. Nurses are here today because we demand that our voices be recognized. Our negotiations team has made multiple proposals surrounding staffing and nurse retention that have gone largely ignored by St. Luke's over the past seven months of contract negotiations. Our St. Luke's negotiating team is currently negotiating in the other room here, and we are hoping for movement at the table today. Nurses are asking for contract language, assuring that our expertise as frontline healthcare workers be a part of hospital decision making around staffing and nurse retention. In negotiations, St. Luke's executives have stated that the buck stops with them when it comes to safe staffing. Recently, I observed an eight hour overnight shift on a med surge unit at St. Luke's that was staffed by two travel nurses caring for 18 patients. Travel nurses are designed to be a temporary supplement to existing staff and not a one-for-one -one replacement. There were no St. Luke's staff registered nurses on that ward for that shift. Additionally, a reasonable assignment for a med surge nurse is three to five patients. Those two travel nurses divided 18 patients and this is an assignment that St. Luke's leadership allowed to happen. Hospital executives consistently ignore and dismiss the concerns of their staff nurses and continue to ask us to simply trust them to have ours and our patients' best interests in mind. Trust wears thin when decisions about nurse staffing and retention are solely entrusted to executives who meet in boardrooms and offices away from the patients that nurses face minute by minute and day to day. St. Luke's executives seem to make staffing decisions based on spreadsheets, budgets, and sterile inhuman numbers rather than collaboratively, including the wisdom and lived experience of frontline nurses. As a nurse, I have initiated CPR, entertained toddlers as I start their IV, inspected bedbound patients' skin for ulcers, and caught heart attacks on an EKG before a doctor has set foot in a patient's room. I have held hundreds of hands, wiped thousands of tears, and been present with people as they die. It is my privilege to call myself a nurse. I know in my bones the time, intellect, and emotional resources needed to truly take care of and be present for people who find themselves within the walls of a hospital. I ask our executives to extend trust, respect, and acknowledgement of the wisdom and skill of its nurses and to finally address our concerns about the state of staffing and nurse retention in our hospital by putting it in writing in our contract. Today, I stand with nurses as we speak out on behalf of ourselves, our patients, and our community. Nurses at St. Luke's have spoken, and we have voted to authorize a strike beginning on December 11th. I will now pass the mic to my colleague from Lakeview Hospital in Two Harbors. Thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is Jerry and I'm a nurse at Lakeview Hospital in Two Harbors. Nurses at Lakeview have taken the historic step of overwhelmingly voting to authorize a strike. Why? Because we care deeply about our community and the care we provide to them. We have done everything in our power to try to get leadership at Lakeview Hospital to listen to nurses and to work with us to solve the crisis of safe staffing and improve recruitment and retention of nurses in our hospital. We met directly with our CEO back in January of this year, trying to get him to be proactive in solving the staffing crisis. We met several more times in labor management, and then when no pro progress was made, we published an open letter to the community, and we took to the sidewalk in an informational picket. Since our first request to open negotiations in June of this year, we have offered several dates to negotiate. Management has only been willing to meet with us twice so far, the first time on November 7th. So far, Lakeview nurses have come down 11% on our wage proposal 
and management has yet to make their first wage proposal. Meanwhile, the crisis of care and working conditions at our hospital is only getting worse. Continued pleas to management to work with nurses to safely staff our hospital and deal with issues of retention and recruitment are met with indifference from our managers and silence from our CEO. Here are just a few examples of the unsafe working conditions at Lakeview Hospital. When no paramedics are available for transfers, Lakeview nurses must ride along on the ambulance with minimal orientation, no supplies of their own, and no policy to guide our actions. While nurses always do everything possible to provide the quality care patients deserve, these hospital policies put patient care at risk. Lakeview nurses are regularly being mandated either to stay beyond their scheduled shift to work, overtime, or take call. Imagine not knowing when you'll be able to go home to your families each day or not being able to plan time with loved ones due to scheduling uncertainties. These overtime policies that force nurses to frequently stay past the end of their shifts have jeopardized the future of health care and retention in our community. Lakeview nurses are simultaneously responsible for inpatient, urgent care, and emergency department. Yet we are the, also the ones held accountable to fill the positions of multiple roles throughout the hospital. For example, Lakeview has frequently left open holes in the health unit coordinator position. This leaves the two or three RNs scheduled to not only care for their assigned patient load, urgent care and ED patients, but also simultaneously perform all the duties of the health unit coordinator by greeting patients at the door, registering them, calling in additional staff if needed, filling out transfer paperwork, uh, working with receiving facilities on critical care transfers and bed placement, calling the ambulance and more. Being expected to simultaneously complete all these tasks and care for the medical needs of our patients is unsustainable and unacceptable. These are just a few examples of unsafe staffing at Lakeview Hospital. We do not take our decision to go on strike lightly. We have worked tire tirelessly to try to address these important issues in every possible way, but our continued pleas to strengthen staffing measures and boost recruitment and retention efforts have gone largely unheard by management and our CEO. We are hoping that this unprecedented step of authorizing a strike and joining with our union siblings across the state in announcing our 10-day notice will result in a better Lakeview for our community in the future. Thank you. St. Luke's is going on an open-ended strike um, and other bargaining units throughout the state uh, will be ending the strike on December 31st. So St. Luke's will be on strike indefinitely? Uh, yes, correct. Correct. <laughs> each bargaining unit is, gets to make their decision. So at each table, people get to decide what's best for their um, facility for their nurses. Um, but we show strong solidarity. This was a strong vote throughout the country. 15,000 nurses, strong, um, we're unified, um, but we do respect that everybody has a table that works a little bit differently. Do you guys have a percentage of here in the front or statewide uh, the who voted in favor of the strike? It is M&A policy to not share the details of the strike, or the vote, sorry. <laughs> I mean, I think that we're all really hopeful. We all love our jobs. That's why we're here. Um, but there needs to be more mo movement. You know, we're not anywhere close to where where we want to be. So. Yes, and I spoke about staffing and nurse retention. For us, that's a huge issue that's been completely, I can't say completely, but it's been largely ignored over seven months. And this is our way to stand firm, to say that we demand that voice at the tape. We demand that voice and decision-making on behalf of our patients. You know, 
Accenture wants to, or the, the hospitals, I think, want to pit us as greedy people. Um, but if you look at the patients who were on the unit who had two nurses for 18 patients, those patients didn't get a discount in their hospital stay. Uh, St. Luke's received the same amount of money that day as they would if they were appropriately staffed with the correct number of nurses. Who is the real greedy one here, okay? And you might not notice that the hospitals are coming out and talking about these staffing numbers. So I don't take lightly, it's a tough thing to come out and talk about, but our community deserves to know the care that they are receiving and the care that they should expect to receive and as our duty as nurses to advocate on behalf of our patients for what they deserve. I think 100%, yes. I mean, uh, money only goes so far. We are stretched incredibly thin at the hospital. It is dangerous and scary, some shifts, um, the care that some of the patients are receiving. So, yeah. Are you any closer uh, in September, uh, the last week or so? I, I think our negotiating teams would probably have to answer that. Um, I don't, you know, language is kind of hard to quantify how close or how far we are as far as language goes. We're here today, so not we're something. not close enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you guys feel, I mean, on these 20 days, it's a amount of time during the holiday season, do you feel that that's going to send a message to the hospital, especially during the holidays, that this is something that the nurses are serious about? And, you know, yeah. Yeah, we certainly hope it sends a message. Been assessing our members for weeks, and uh, we've been assessing our members uh, for weeks. And um, the assessments that we have uh, achieved have given us the ability to move forward with um, an open-ended strike. Yeah, we we wouldn't be moving this way if our members weren't behind us, um, giving us that information that that was what we needed to do. Would it be correct to say that this is the only hospital in Minnesota doing an indefinite strike? Um, I believe so at this point. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we, Lake, we Lakeview Hospital, which is a part of St. Luke's, is also doing an open end and strike as well. Just to clarify Sorry. that. No, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would just like to add that Oscar was inside when we started this, and he's turning five months on Saturday. So we've been at this a really long time. Did you guys, when you started uh, this whole process, uh, and any of you guys can answer this, did you guys think? No, I mean we took we took the stance to uh, you know walk out back in September, and we didn't want to do that back then. The fact that we're here right now is still um, you know saying how important it is that we are not going to settle. Like we we need a language that protects our nurses going forward, and um, we'll do whatever we can to continue to try to get that for our nurses and our members. Um, they're on standby at both facilities. Um, they, I think, are uh, getting up to speed, um, but they haven't officially been asked to participate in that role quite yet. I, I know mediation is something that was a bit of a touchy topic in the last uh, strike. Is there something that changed in terms of uh, wanting a mediator present? Um, we believe that if it's necessary that we need that assistance, we want to have it available. Um, we still will continue to bargain in good faith, and uh, we hope that you know the employer does as well. If for some reason that changes and we need that assistance, um, we're not unwilling to use that assistance. That hasn't been given to Moose Lake. So um, how I've heard it compared is it's like comparing apples and oranges. So Moose Lake has been without a contract since Essentia bought that facility, um, and that's been over two years. Uh, so it's kind of comparing apples to oranges, their contract and our contract. Um, and I'm not, start from scratch. yeah, right. And they had to completely start from scratch, whereas we have a pretty, um, 
you know, pretty solid groundwork to go from. Thank you all for coming. What do we want? <laughs> <laughs> when do we want it? Now! What do we want?